Hey there friends, Kate here from Kate Mac Stock. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a smart layer to a frame mockup image so that dropping in your design into a frame mockup is super easy and fast. So I have a background image open here in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna come over here to the shapes tool and then just, I'm gonna choose the rectangle tool. I'm gonna fill it with just the color white just so it's bright and easy to see. I have no stroke selected so that it doesn't have any border or anything. And then if I come over here to the gear icon, you can see that I have it set to proportional and then a width eight, height 10, because this is an eight by 10 frame. If you were working with a square frame, you'd just set it to like five by five or 10 by 10, just so that those two numbers were equal and it created a square rectangle. You can also hold the shift button if you're looking to create a square rectangle, but here we're trying to do an eight by 10 rectangle and so we'll leave it at that. Whoops. So I click and then drag and create a rectangle. Now I could just set the rectangle to be the size of the mat opening, but I like my design to appear a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to create a rectangle that is pretty proportionate with the frame size, but just a little bit bigger than the mat opening. Now I can click command, hold down command on the keyboard and then click and move this rectangle around to be centered within the frame or I can um, push on the keyboard Command T for free transform or edit free transform also gets you so that you're able to move this rectangle that you just created around to be just perfectly centered within the frame. And to be honest, I usually eyeball it. And then once it's in a place where I like it, I either click the check mark button or click enter. And then we have a rectangle that's a great size to drop in a design. In order to make that easy, I'm just gonna right click on the layer where we just created that rectangle and convert it to a smart object. And then I'm going to double click on this area to the right of the name of that layer and it opens up the layer style panel. <clears throat> and then I click here on inner shadow and it creates this inner shadow which makes it appear like the rectangle and where we're gonna put our design is actually behind the map. It's sort of a fun little trick. So I set my uh, blend mode to multiply, opacity to 20%, angle 30 degrees, using global light, distance 10 pixels, choke 0%, size 38 pixels. And I actually clicked on make this, these settings my default, because they're some they're just settings that I feel like work and are realistic with the light that I actually use for my images. So if I click OK, then we have a smart layer that's proportioned to 8 by 10 and with an inner shadow already. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to drop in your design. When I double click on that preview area, I'm gonna go back so you can see where I click. If I double click right here on this preview image of that rectangle smart layer, it opens up this new file that's a PSB file. And what we're gonna do is place, if you go to file and then place, a design file, like just a JPEG of any design file that you've already made, right here onto that background. And you'll want to like, proportionate so that it fills up that entire background area so that when it appears in the frame image it's filling up that entire area that we just made so I'm going to click check mark and then file save or command s if you're a keyboard shortcut person like I am um, and that and then you can close it out. And what it does is it makes it appear right in that area that we created with an inner shadow already. And you can save your PSD file, your Photoshop file, just like this, and then just double click on the smart layer whenever you want to add a new design. You can flatten the image and then save it as a JPEG if you're using it in your online shop or your social media or your website. Um, but there's one extra step I'm going to show you that I like to do that you don't have to, but I like to do because I think it adds um, an extra layer, of, an extra just degree of realism. And I'm going to add a gray overlay layer that's just clipped and just over this design area. So I, I click down here for a new layer. Here's my new layer. I'm going to click up here to the paint bucket tool and then choose a gray, a medium to light gray, like medium light right in here. Here's all C's. That'll make it easier, easy to remember. Click OK, and then I fill in the entire layer. Don't worry, your background or your design, your background will come back. I just right clicked on the layer, the gray layer, and I click Create Clipping Mask. And then I set my opacity to 10%. 
And what this does is just, it helps mimic the light that a real frame with a real, um, a real print in it would have looked like had I photographed it actually with this eucalyptus on this, on this uh, shelf. So if I toggle on and off with the gray layer, you can see how it just brings that contrast down slightly. It brings the colors down slightly and just makes it look slightly more realistic. And you can turn that off or you can just sort of play with it and see what you like. But usually 10% is sort of is my happy spot that I feel like makes it look pretty realistic. So there you have it. You can flatten this, like I said, save it as a JPEG, throw it up on your website, come back to your PSD file that you've created and change out this print design as much as you want and use the background over and over again. So I hope that helps explain my steps in creating a layered smart layer file with the frame mockups.